Hello everyone, Richard here. I thought for this video I'd try something a little bit different. I was sat around and realised I had quite a cool, a lot of cool things, uh, projects going on and things that have been sent to me. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about them and a little bit about the community. Um, I'm not sure what you want from my 3D printing channel and there's a lot of other 3D printing channels that cover news, reviews, all sorts of other things. So do let me know whether this sort of video is of any use or whether I should stick to more of the design development rep wrap 3d printing and just sort of general getting stuck in there type of 3d print work um, okay so first of all e3d sent me the titan extruder which is really nice this little fella here uh, it's a geared extruder so it's got a nice delrin uh, acetal gear that drives directly off the motor so we've got a three to one reduction going into the hot end. It's a really nice compact lightweight extruder. I've been using it on the V6 and I've just taken it off to switch over to the Volcano so I can get a little bit more throughput through and see whether I can get some really fast printing going on. So at the moment it's going really well. I've been making a few different brackets to go on different printers and generally allow me to switch it around a little bit more. Uh, it is a really great design. I has that. I actually went to see 3 do about a year ago now and they showed me the very first incarnation of the Titan. It was a prototype SLA type model that they were refining. So they've spent a long time working on this and that really pleases me that they haven't rushed it and what they've actually delivered out to the marketplace so far is looking fantastic. So I'm really, really delighted uh, with that. They also sent me some edge filament, which is quite nice. I've been using this spool, which is the gray, and uh, the packaging is really great for it. So we've got some really nice, nice packaging that E3D are doing. All on plastic spools still. So I'm still trying to convince people not to use plastic spools, to use cardboard spools, but we'll get there in the end. The material so far, the testing has gone really nice. It's a modified copolyester that they've done quite a lot of work refining with and just turning it into a really nice material to use. So it's nice and strong, it's PET style uh, copolyester that uh, works quite well with their support materials. So Edge has been really refined to work nicely on that. Okay, so that's quite interesting. Uh, a few things I want to say about the community side of things. Uh, if you use Octoprint and you know of Gina, who does all of the support and development and everything really to do with Octoprint, because she's been doing it for quite some, some years, she did have some good support through BQ. And unfortunately, because of the redundancies, the layoffs, her whole team um, was sort of let go. So Octoprint is a little bit in limbo at the moment because Gina's trying to find a way to actually fund the further the further development of Octoprint. So she's got a Patreon campaign going on. If you can give any money to her to help the de further development of Octoprint, please do. Or by all means, just please let more people know about uh, Octoprint using it and just generally try and give a bit more social media awareness and that sort of thing, especially at this time for Gina. So that's one thing I really wanted to say in the community. The other thing is two other people were also made, uh, well, made redundant, um, their teams were disbanded from BQ and that's Niels and Tom and they're two really big people in the 3D printing community and it's such a shame that basically they're struggling now to just try and get back on their feet and get some things underway, get some new projects going that will allow them to continue with 3D printing. Tom's looking really seriously at doing more and more 3D printing YouTube style things. I'll put a link to his channel if you're not already subscribed, Tom's 3DP. And Niels is also looking to see what he can do. He's also just become a father again for I think the seventh time, correct me if I'm wrong, but a beautiful daughter called Zelda. So that was really nice to see in the community this week as well. So if you can support those guys just while they're going through a little bit of transition, even if it's just saying hi and just giving them a bit of support on Google G+, in the communities, that sort of thing on Twitter, that would be really great. So a few other things, I support Kickstarter campaigns for things every now and again and sometimes I forget that I've supported them and one turned up uh, which was really nice, it was the WIO link which is a Internet of Things type modules, not so much to do with 3D printing but it's actually a project I'm going to be doing with my daughter. Uh, who's now really into Arduino and all that sort of stuff. And um, they're really nice little boards. You get two of these and a 
a whole load of really good Grove sensors. They send you a big box full of these cool sensors that you can use for doing all sorts of internet things, interactivity in the real world. So I've been doing things like this with my daughter for some years now and she's getting to the point where, yeah, it could be a good thing to just sort of get more programming going before she gets in to uh, secondary school. She's still only 10, so you know there's still plenty of time to learn all this stuff, but you've got to start them young and she's really enthusiastic and interested. So we're going to be doing some really cool projects with that and incorporating 3D printing. One of them is this. I've got a nice big 3D printed model, which isn't finished yet. I'm not going to tell you what it's about, but it's going to have some cool stuff going on. So we'll have a bit, a bit of a project going on there. Uh, what else can I tell you? Well, that's probably about it. There's a few other Kickstarters since we've been talking about Kickstarters going on. There's the Olo 3D printer, which is like 3D printer resin using your mobile phone. It's only got one day to go, so I feel I can sort of talk about it now. I've been asked a lot of questions about the Olo, whether I like it, whether I would support it. Generally, no. Um, I'm not really that keen. I do have uh, a, a, a community on Google Plus for an open SLA project, which I've been working on doing all sorts of things with resins and 3D printers for over a year and a half now. Uh, I'm, I'm not so keen on resin printers. I've spent a lot, enough time now to know that they're not really for me. And I think the problem I've got with Olo is really that it's it's such a low price point. It's got 2.2 million dollars in backing and that scares me off for any Kickstarter. Anything that goes over about half a million I always think well there's going to be a lot of delays. They've got to scale up the company. Everything's going to change so getting the likelihood of all those timescales done and manufacturing and everything else let alone a good product out the door is going to be tricky. Um, I'm not going to slate their product because it's going to be okay but I think people are thinking they're going to be doing a lot with it and daylight SLA resins are okay but really they're quite slow, they're quite messy, they're quite fiery to play with and to use so I'm not too convinced. Uh, it's not for me and I wish anyone luck who supported it and I hope that they'll meet all their timescales and things. So there's a, loads of other interesting 3D printing projects going on in the community at the moment. We're in a bit of a phase of sort of a tiny bit of slowdown. There's some really good materials developments going on and some new printers being developed and discussed. Just the other day I was asked about Core XY and I responded by saying, well, it's never really taken my fancy, which is just an interesting conversation because it's one of those printer mechanisms that it just works. Yes, it's fine. There's not a lot you can do to tweak it. I've done various different printer mechanisms over the years, but Core XY has never really fired me up enough to bother creating a dedicated printer to use it. I'm not that keen on all the belts everywhere. There's a lot of belting going on, a lot of pulleys and systems, and it's just not quite for me. I do like belt-driven Z-axis, so a Core XZ, Core YZ, even a Core YE, using the extruder as a that sort of thing. So some of those more interesting combinations might be more where I would be more interested in doing some development work on Core XY style printers, uh, maybe just that side of things. Um, and that's about it. That's all I've really got on this roundup for now. Do let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about, cover, if you have any questions, and whether or not this sort of video is something you want to see from me, or whether I should just stick to development. Okay, thanks ever so much. See you next time.